Welcome to the Tesla Power Podcast. This is where we're building the Tesla Energy community covering solar panels, solar roof, and power wall for your home. I'm Aaron Brady. Today, let's talk about the most important factor for solar. Let's talk about heat pumps and home services. Let's talk about solar panels heating the environment. Let's talk about solar roof hit by the chip shortage and a bunch more. Let's do it. So as per usual, we'll kick off the uh, podcast with community input. You can participate in several ways. Uh, you can, of course, leave a comment below. You can link your YouTube videos. You can call 203-816-5150, or you can email teslapowerpodcast at gmail.com. And I keep mentioning you know, the video question thing, but no takers so far. I got the idea from Consumers Reports. Uh, Consumer Reports, they do this thing called Talking Cars Podcast. And you know what? They had some limited success with that, uh, but... Not any recently. I haven't seen any video questions in a long time on that show. So it's not like everyone is an egomaniac or something. Maybe that's the problem. Not like me, right? They don't want to be on video all the time. But uh, I don't know. I just thought it was the TikTok generation. Way off on that one, obviously. <laughs> so let's get to community input. Our first one up. This one comes from Carl Jensen. Uh, he points out the most important factor for a solar system. Let's read it. Quote, uh, the most important factor... ROI. In the past, it was a good deal in California, but now between the regulations, limitations, and poor grid tie compensation, only off-grid is reasonable if conditions permit, end quote. And, you know, California's got some stuff to sort out for sure. Um, I'm curious, though, if Carl was one of the ones that's been able to go off-grid. You know, I agree that the most important factor for mass adoption is return on investment. I mean, if the economics aren't right, it's just not going to happen. So it's got to be able to pay for itself or customers aren't going to buy it. Uh, hopefully, rich people don't necessarily need the investment to pay for itself. Uh, so we might still have some, you know, early adopters. Um, so, you know, they're, you know, the more wealthy people are looking for some cachet probably, right, associated with the product. Um, but what is clear or at least what's becoming clear is that the utilities and the government can't subsidize solar in perpetuity. Just can't happen, right? Um, I, I would even argue that they shouldn't, even if they could. Um, market ROI needs to be there without subsidies if it's going to be a sustainable future, both in an environmental sense and in an economic sense. All right, let's bring up the next one. This one's, uh, again, from Dwight. Uh, Dwight Adams says... Um, well, he's pointing out that heat pumps will help now and will help more in the future. So let's bring his comment full screen. Quote, I replaced my traditional electric hot water heater 13 months ago with a Rheem hybrid hot water heater with a heat pump. We used 540 kilowatt hours of electricity, uh, of energy, specifically electricity for 2021, which is a large savings. We usually use less than two kilowatt hours per day. Our energy costs in Florida are about 10 to 11 cents per kilowatt hour. Therefore, water heater energy costs about $55 annually. Eventually, I'm going to change our, we can read more, right? Yep, I'm going to change our HVAC heat pump out with a variable speed system to reduce energy costs. Our current heat pump is the typical on or off system with frequent starts more than once per hour during extremely hot or cold weather. Reducing the number of starts greatly affects energy use, end quote. And... Water gets a heat pump. Dryer gets a heat pump. HVAC gets a heat pump. You all get a heat pump. And, you know, I could see why Tesla's looking toward producing an integrated heat pump solution. If it's really that good, then it's going to be an, a tremendous savings in electricity. And if we've got to save, you know, the electricity problem, we can't just be looking for electricity generation. Of course, we've got to make um, our, our use of that electricity uh, more efficient. So the variable speed heat pump, uh, it'll be key, and we look forward to hearing more from you, Dwight, when you get the dryer and the HVAC converted. Next up, we've got um, Bo Dillard. I think that's how you spell it or how you pronounce it, B-O-E. Bo Dillard wants to tap the rumor mill. Let's read it. Quote, has there been any talk about solar glass for improvements? End quote. So I put a line out, uh, and I snagged a minnow. The whisper at the moment is that the tiles will get a little bit of a wattage boost, but they'll also get a little size boost. So this is like what they just did with solar panels. Uh, the panels didn't get a boost in efficiency, but they did get a boost in wattage because they're making the panels a little bit bigger. So regardless of the rumor, though, Tesla is notorious for sneaking improvements in without any announcements. 
So let's go a little deeper into the rabbit hole. I ran across an article on a recent patent application. Let me pull that up. Uh, might as well just go full screen with it. Uh, this is from a publication way off its beat. This is from Auto Evolution. I'm sure they scrubbed Tesla patents for car news, but this one happened to be on the Tesla solar roof. If I uh, scroll a bit, quote, uh, after a few failed deliveries and some delayed ones, Tesla plans on seriously upgrading the solar roof. According to the patent mentioned, the new photovoltaic modules, also known as solar panels, will be more efficient and will come standard with an improved layer of protection, end quote. And sadly, this is a bunch of clickbaity hype, but we can toss it in the, uh, to feed the, the rumor monster for sure, right? <laughs> they linked the patent in the article. So let's look at that, right? We want to get to the primary source so we can really see what's going on. And I mean, if we're looking at what's going on, you know, just getting a better idea of what you know, is in the patent, I think will give us, you know, a really good idea of, of um, you know, how hypey this is. So let me pull that up one second, full screen. Um, so we'll come back to the abstract. They, they uh, point out what it's uh, generally doing here. I just want to breeze through these drawings and you can see that they've got um, the form factor from the version one tile. Go back through all this. They do have these layouts here uh, with, pretty large form factor cells, but because these are the old drawings with the old triple cell um, configuration, I don't think that this is anything new. It appears to be a derivative of the original product. It's so just going through here. See how it's uh, one of the smaller cells or smaller tiles, I mean, with only two cells in it. Um, here at the end of the patent, we can see that what they're including in the patent is a patent process. Um, so of course, patents don't just have to be for physical manifestation, but also can be for processes. Um, but there's no detail in this about any kind of improved layer and protection in any of these um, drawings or explanations or anything like that. There's a second process that they've included here. Um, so nothing about that. It just gives the whole process for um, putting together the solar tiles themselves. And if we go all the way back up to the abstract, let's read that really quickly. Um, I don't see any mention of this layer of protection that the article talks about. Um, and I don't see anything about improved efficiency. It's just talking about making something at high volume um, for, you know, a lower price. Um, and, you know, the only mention of improved efficiency was right at the beginning of the patent background which is all the way at the end. So if I get down here. But if you've been looking at these solar roof patents for a while, you can see that there's not really anything new here. So on background, this disclosure is generally related to photovoltaic or roof tiles. More specifically, this disclosure is related um, to photovoltaic roof modules with improved aesthetics and power efficiency. I mean, it's really just, you know, boilerplate stuff. So it's not that, you know, it's not the explosive reveal that the article purports, you know, but it is proof that they're continuing to improve the processes and the designs of the solar roof. So we can absolutely expect those improvements to roll into the product without any fanfare as soon as they're ready to go. You know, it's just like the 72 watt solar tile uh, that they uh, started rolling out back in October. All right, next up, we've got a question or a comment from Nexusly. Um, Nexus Lee is in a mortal struggle against pine trees and their pollen pollution. Let's take it full screen. So, quote, just wanted to point something out. If you live next to pollen trees like pine trees, it'll cover your roof daily until the pollen season ends. I tried to clean it up a couple days ago and the pollen reappeared magically. And quote, I mean, that sucks. Uh, we get a little bit of pollen here, too. Uh, I missed it last year since our system hadn't been inspected by the city and uh, hadn't yet been activated. But I'll definitely be complaining about it in a couple of months when it starts to, to become uh, pollen season. Send some photos. Uh, we'll commiserate. Um, I'm very interested in how badly it's going to hurt production. Um, we've seen that snow brings it to zero, right? Um, you know, I really want to know how close that effect is, um, you know, just like it is with the solar panels and the solar roof. So snow will shut you down 100%, especially if you've got solar panels. Um, but I expect it's not going to be that bad for pollen, right? Some light should still be able to get in. 
Uh, it depends on how much pollen, obviously, but it definitely sounds like it's going to be more persistent, right? The snow is gone, you know, basically same day for those of us with, with a solar roof. Solar panels, maybe it takes five days to clear the panels, um, as long as you get some good sun that can, can melt the snow. Of course, nothing happens if it stays super cold, but, um, you know, um, you, you could dig out your solar panels, I suppose. I mean, I don't know anybody that's going to get on their roof and dig out their solar, solar panels. But fortunately, I happen to live in a wet area of the country. Um, so even when we get pollen, we'll get thunderstorms that'll clean that pollen off. Uh, but anyway, more to come as we get into spring. So thank you to Carl Jensen, Dwight Adams, Bo Dillard, and Nexus Lee for your input. Let's hear from the rest of you too. Send in your YouTube links, comment below, call 203-816-50, or email teslapowerpodcast at gmail.com. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get into the news. All right. Physics World collates a series of papers that look into the thermal effect of solar panels on mass. Let's bring it full screen. Quote, um, a systematic review of 116 papers looking at how solar panels affect the surrounding environment has found that they can significantly warm cities during the day. This heating can also affect the performance of photovoltaic systems, the study found. The researchers suggest future work should focus on increasing the reflectance of wavelengths of sunlight not converted into electricity. End quote. Now, this is super interesting. Um, I wonder how the solar roof compares to the solar panels in this respect. Um, I'll need to put it on the list for review as we get into the warmer months, but the fact that the solar panels are black is likely a huge part of this effect, right? The solar roof, also black, but it includes um, cells and glass over the top. So all those things are you know, in common between the two. A couple of differences though, are that the solar roof is textured and it doesn't have the same metal composition. So it should be more insulating where the solar panels will be more conductive. That's my thinking anyway. So if any viewers uh, have any insight here, let us know in the comments below. We'll discuss more. Next up, we've got um, uh, an article from Electrek, the report on another casualty of the chip shortage. Quote, um, Tesla has communicated to employees and some customers that its supply chain issues are now extending to its solar roof product. And for now, it's stopping scheduling for new installations and it's not clear when those problems will be solved end quote and drew baglino was pointing out that it's not just chips but it's also super boring components like connectors fasteners reference oscillators and other things that aren't particularly sophisticated but are integral in just making stuff right so we thought uh the numbers for tesla residential energy were bad last year this doesn't look good they're definitely going to be worse this year so it's true that tesla was able to navigate the chip shortage last year but when there are chip shortages or shortages of any sort, you know, Tesla Energy is going to be hurt most because they're prioritizing the automotive part of the business. No secret there, right? So if your installation has been delayed, let us know how long it's going to be delayed. Let us know if they provide any detail on what they're waiting on. And that's it for the news for now. Let's take another quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about production and get a real update on PTO. So what I was wanting to do was take a, a look at production since the last podcast. Uh, let me pause and pull that up. All right, so I forget which one it is actually. Yeah, there it is. All right, so there's the phone um, and there's the app. Um, so the last few days, actually we've had some good sun until the snow that we started having today. So we've been hitting you know 30 kilowatts of production almost. There's a nice curve right there with uh, 31.2 kilowatts of generation. You know, lots of sun. Um, so really been really been good. Really looking forward to these longer days uh, with good generation. Uh, today a little bit less, again, because of that snow. Um, the brother-in-law, let's check out his stuff, actually. We can just go straight over to his page here. Um, he's been out producing me. So you can see that these days are getting, you know, pretty close to the 35 kilowatts 
uh, kilowatt hours of generation going through days. Of course, today it snows and he has nothing and probably won't be generating anything for a couple more days. So I have some time to catch up. Um, his monthly production so far, I think he's ahead of us, right? So his production this month is at that 245 kilowatt hours. If we go back to ours and check out the monthly numbers. Uh, we're, we're slightly ahead, 275. So I don't know, that's a couple days of production. Um, and I'm gonna get a couple more days of production on him <laughs> over the next few days because he's gonna be covered in snow. But it's gonna be really interesting you know, to see how the systems compare after we have a full year of data. We're coming up, coming up on that in May. I think I have a full month of uh, generation. I'm pretty sure. But I keep promising we'll get him on the podcast to give his experience and we'll do it. We'll get a deep dive out of him, get some, um, you know, input on how his experience has been, who he went with as a vendor and how satisfied he is with solar in general. Um, so let's get to my experience this week. Uh, I've been a lazy jerk. I haven't done anything to follow up on PTO, but I got a nice nudge from uh, J3 Hikes. Let's bring up his, uh, his comment. He says, another great vid, Aaron. Uh, did you ever get PTO for your system? Question mark. Well, no, <laughs> but I did promise to call right away. I dialed the Tesla solar roof hotline. I put that in the notes of every show. I had my EN number ready and I got an update. Um, my application has been approved, mm. which means Tesla has now requested that my utility book the witness test again. And we're waiting on a United Illuminating. That's my utility to book that date. So last time the witness test was booked about four weeks from the request date. So we might be looking at PTO before our one year anniversary. Um, I'm happy about the witness test, of course, but I'm really pumped to chat with the Tesla electricity again. It'll probably be Dave. Uh, he's been the guy that's been uh, sent out the last couple of times, one of which was during that last witness test. Uh, he's awesome. He's a legit industry veteran. He knows his stuff. Uh, I don't know. I'll see if I can't tease out a couple of juicy details that I can share with the community. But overall, I'm really excited about spring and the longer days. Um, it's not like it's been a long winter or anything, but you know, who doesn't love a warm, sunny day, right? We had a couple of the other day. It was just glorious. But mostly I'm excited about kicking the kids out of the house to play outside. I mean, I love my kids. They got to go. <laughs> but that'll do it for episode 43 of the Tesla Power Podcast. Please use my referral code um, if you want to save some money on a solar roof. Um, it'll be 500 bucks for a Tesla solar roof and $300 if you go with Tesla Solar. Of course, that... Um, link, if I bring it up, is in the show notes, every show, ts.la slash Aaron62310. And I'm Aaron Brady, your Tesla Residential Energy Community Organizer. Let's do this again on the next video.